With Wolfenstein Youngblood on the horizon, what better time than now to take a look back at the story of BJ Blazkowicz and see how Terror Billy earned his nickname and reputation as a Nazi killing badass. Here's Wolfenstein's story in six minutes. But before that though, we're not going to hold back when it comes to both spoilers and the extreme violence the series is known for. So if either of those things disturb you, like for example splitting a Nazi's head with a hatchet, now's the chance to back out. Also for the purpose of keeping this video quick and to the point, we'll be focusing on the mainline machine games developed Wolfenstein games. Alright, everyone good? Then let's kill some Nazis. The year is 1946, World War II is in full effect and the tide of war is shifting in the favor of the Nazis thanks to, well, things like this. Professional Nazi slayer Captain William Joseph Blaskowitz and his unit storm a Nazi compound. But the mission goes sideways and BJ is forced to watch as the Nazi scientist Death's Head kills a former friend of your choosing. General Death's Head. Yeah, he's teaching me a lesson. Then BJ escapes, but leaves with the parting gift of coma-inducing shrapnel in the head. After a 14-year nap, BJ awakens in a Polish asylum. He is tended to by a nurse named Anya, who eventually will end up being his future wife and an absolute badass, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Nazis show up to do their Nazi thing, Blasco fights his way out, and upon learning about how the Nazis have taken over the world while he was sleeping, he sets out to form a resistance. Blasco and Anya hitch a ride on a train to Berlin, and it's here that we first meet the crazy to the max, Frau and Gail. <laughs> anyway, Blasco and Anya have train sex, infiltrate the prison, and rescue the friend that you didn't let die. I'm guessing it was Fergus, because, well, Fergus is just clearly cooler than Wyatt. Here I was, getting ready for the eternal nap, and this Nazi killing jamming bastard Shows up out of nowhere. And they make their way to the Resistance HQ in Berlin. The Resistance learn of the Dat Yehud. Dash Yehud? Dash Yehud? Dash Yehud. Anyway, it's an ancient Jewish mystical society with technology that is centuries ahead of its time, and one of its members, Set Roth, is being held at a labor camp. So, Lasko frees him, and Frau and Gel gets her face crushed, making her all the more terrifying. Will you cry? You will die like vermin. I will hunt you down. Set explains that the Nazi discovery of a Dashihud cache was what allowed them to create their super weapons and ultimately win the war against the Allies. But it wasn't the only cache. So the Resistance steal a U boat, head to a cache at the bottom of the Atlantic, find cool new toys. Fuck me. I know what you're thinking, Blasco. No chance. I'm keeping this thing. Then they head to the moon. Yeah, the moon, to steal some nuclear launch codes. As soon as Blasco gets back though, Engel raids the Resistance HQ. Rest in peace, Tekla and Klaus. This brings us to the climax of New Order. The Resistance mount an assault on Death's Head's compound, and you face off against his giant robot with the brain of your friend from the beginning of the game, because, well, he's an evil Nazi scientist. After the final battle, Death's Head tries to pull off one more trick by blowing himself up with a grenade to try and take BJ with him. BJ survives, the compound gets leveled by a bomb, and BJ takes another coma-induced nap. Which brings us to the New Colossus. BJ sleeps for five months while the Resistance hide in their stolen new boat, and then he wakes up conveniently when the Nazis storm the sub. But he gets captured and has to once again watch as a psycho murders one of his friends. Rest in peace, Caroline. BJ and crew escape thanks to Frau and Gil's daughter, Syngren, who's had enough of her mom's abuse, and altogether the group heads to the US to look for some new members. This takes them to New York, where they find and recruit the married couple of Grace Walker and Norman Super Spesh Caldwell. Grace is a survivor of the atomic bomb that was dropped on the US while BJ was comatose, and the leader of the American resistance. Spesh is a former lawyer and conspiracy theorist who is extremely excited at the idea of a working toilet. Oh my sweet God in heaven, a working Mother flushing toilet! I never thought I'd see the day! After a quick mission to Roswell, BJ gets captured during a home visit when his racist bag of a father sells him out to the Nazis. Daddy gets away he deserves, but things take a bad turn for the resistance when Spesh dies trying to get BJ out of prison. It was space daily, And, well, BJ gets his head chopped off. Every 
everything's fine though because they Frankenstein BJ's head onto a super soldier body and with his head on new shoulders, he goes to space for an audience with Hitler himself on Venus disguised as an actor auditioning to play himself in a propaganda movie. Let's just say it's a very convincing portrayal. While there, BJ manages to steal the codes for the Odin, an automated defense system that guards the Nazi stronghold. Sigrun decrypts the codes and finds a way to shut it down, which sets up the big finale where the Resistance members launch an assault on the Nazi's giant fortified airbase, hijack Odin's command systems, and finish up in time to make it to Frau Engel's appearance on the Jimmy Carver show, where BJ splits her head with a hatchet on national TV. And that's where the story leaves off. Frau Engel is dead, the resistance is stronger than ever, and the message to rise up has been delivered across the world. With that, you're all caught up on Wolfenstein just in time for Youngblood, which takes place 20 years after the events of New Colossus and stars BJ and Anya's twin daughters, Jessica and Sophia. Thanks for watching! Make sure to check out our reviews for both Wolfenstein New Order and New Colossus, and for everything else, keep it here on IGN.